So Stefan, Moderna's latest results from its late stage trials has got the world really excited and it's the same for us here in Singapore. And you were telling me that you have submitted an application to the US FDA for emergency use of your vaccine in the US. What do you think this means for Singapore? Good morning or good evening. Thank you for, for having me. So what it means is first that we have a vaccine, as you said, that seems very promising. The study is now fully analyzed, 94% efficacy of no disease for people who get the vaccine. And what is very exciting to me is there is no case of severe disease. And as you know, what drives hospitalization, ICU and death is severe disease. So we're very excited that we had no severe disease with our vaccine. So in terms of timelines, we started to discuss with uh, Health Singapore to submit to them all the information. Uh, it's really, of course, their prerogative of how long they're going to take to review the file, but I could anticipate either in December or January, they would be comfortable with all the data. And as soon as it's possible, then we'll be shipping vaccines to Singapore. So do you have any information of how many doses that could be? We have information, but because this has not been disclosed yet by Singapore government, I'm not allowed to disclose at this, this time, but the Singapore government very early, uh, back last summer, has been ordering doses uh, for its inhabitants and has been ordering more recently with more data. So there will be a vaccine for Singapore. On the US side, they've been saying that, you know, the Americans could get vaccinated as early as maybe middle of next month. So and you're saying in Singapore, it could be end of next month or even January? Correct. So in the US, uh, we have a meeting with the FDA for their scientific advisory board on December 17. What we'll expect is within 24 to 72 hours after that meeting that we could get emergency use approval. What we have worked with the US government is to have within 24 hours of the approval starting vaccination. Uh, so now let's turn to Singapore. Singapore, uh, I need to have an approval so we can ship a product to the country. As you know, uh, medicine is very important to be well controlled and well documented. So uh, we started to send to Singapore, uh, help Singapore, sorry, the information for preclinical data in animal, phase one, phase two, and now phase three, all the manufacturing files. And we're we'll gonna have a dialogue, like is very typical to exchange data and to answer all their questions when they're going to be satisfied that the product to their standard is safe and can be taken, they will give us an approval. At that time, whether in December or January, at that time, uh, we will be shipping right away products to Singapore. So inoculation and vaccination can start. So do you think, you know, having modernist vaccine in Singapore is a sort of a gateway for the rest of Asia? I think it will help a lot. Uh, and if you think about it, you know, uh, very few countries in Asia I think maybe only Japan has been as proactive as Singapore in all I've seen. I and mean, as you can imagine, we have talked to, to all the governments uh, around Asia and around the world. Uh, but I really think Singapore and Japan have been at the leading front in acting early, in having a very good uh, medical team and scientific team looking at the data and deciding to place orders so that there will be secure doses for the Singapore population. So maybe we could just talk a bit about the figures, the headline figures behind these promising results. So you mentioned 94.1% efficacy in terms of preventing COVID-19 and 100% uh, efficacy at preventing severe COVID-19. So how did uh, Moderna arrive at these figures? So what we did is we ran a 30,000 people phase three study. That's the last study you do before approval. And half of a group, 15,000 people got placebo. So we got water in the arm. In the other half got the vaccine. Nobody knew who got what. So the doctors didn't know, and the participant didn't know if they got the vaccine or the placebo. Uh, and then we had to wait. That's how you run vaccine studies. It's very typical in industry, nothing specific to COVID. You just wait for cases of infection. And what we did, we had agreed with FDA before the start of the trial, that when you look at the statistics and how to power statistically the trial, we needed 151 cases. Well, yesterday we reported 196 cases, so more than required, because as you know, there's very high infection in the US. So it's bad for the country right now, but it's helping the vaccine trial go faster. So of those 196 uh, cases of COVID disease that were confirmed by adjudication by clinician, that those were real COVID disease and testing and everything, 
185 cases were on placebo and 11 cases were on the vaccine. That gives you the 94.1% efficacy, meaning if you get our vaccine, once approved, you have 94% chance of having no disease symptom if you get infected by the virus. But what got me most excited on Sunday when I learned about the data is that there were 30 cases of severe disease out of the 196 cases total. But 30 cases of severe disease, all of them were on placebo. There was zero on the vaccine. So if you summarize and you look at those two data together, it means if you get a vaccine, 94% chance of having no disease, no symptom, no fever, no disease. And in the 6% case that you have disease, it will be mild disease. You will not have severe disease. And as you think about what has really put the economy uh, on its knees everywhere and all the social impact we have, job impact, schooling, mental health, and so on, it's the hospitalization of people that are elderly, of people that have comorbidity factors, and the worst cases become you know, ICU patient, and the worst cases lead to death. And of course, the governments have had to take all the measures we have taken to reduce that. Mm -hmm. If you were able to immunize most of the population with vaccine, like Moderna's vaccine, with high efficacy, uh, you will be able to prevent hospitalization, and that will be a game changer. But for those people who receive the vaccine, do they span the different demographics, the different age groups, the different races, different ethnicities? Yes, indeed. What we got a lot of compliment for Dr. Fauci in the US is the diversity of our trial. 25% are 65 and older, so a lot of elderly because we know so there is a lot of disease. We have also, you know, 5% uh, of Asian in the study. We have African American. We have Latino. We have people with diabetes, with heart disease, with pulmonary disease. We have people with HIV, people that are HIV positive. So uh, it's people above 18 years of age. We do not have yet data in the teenager or the children. It's very typical in vaccine development. Usually what you do is you start in adults and when you have efficacy and safety, then you do a study into teenagers. So our goal is to start very soon in December, study in 11 to 17. I'm hoping that we'll get the data by uh, June so that for uh, the summer they can be vaccinated. So by the time they go back in school, we go back to normal school. But then for younger children, it will take a bit longer because you have to go down slowly in age. Be very careful for safety, of course. And you start at a low dose and then you go with a bit higher dose because, of course, safety is our priority number one, like it is to help Singapore mm -hmm. and to the FDN. So we want to be very, very careful with the children. So, you know, a number of biotech companies have set up shop here in Singapore, R&D facilities and all that because of our thriving biomedical industry. So does Moderna have plans, you know, to come to Singapore? So we have had very good discussion with Singapore for quite some time. Uh, we have no plan at this time just because we have been so busy working on the vaccine this year <laughs> that we don't have really time to really think about expansion. I have a chance to have gone to Singapore personally more than 20 times over the years and know how great a biotech hub it is and the high level of education uh, and the very strong commitment of Singapore people uh, and their very strong work ethics. So I'm sure we'll find, we'll find ways to collaborate more and more to Singapore. Okay, thank you, Stefan, for your time and good luck with the rest of the vaccine development journey. Thank you so much for everything. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Okay.